Welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Risch, and we're going to continue on with our readings uh, from the inner chamber and the inner life. And today we're going to be looking at the open door and the open reward. And with that said, let us just get into our scripture, or get into our reading, and we will read the the writings here of uh, Andrew Murray, by the way. And when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy feet, and thou appear un, not unto men to fast, but to thy father which seeth in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret will reward thee openly. Matthew uh, 6.17 When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. Acts uh, 4.13 And it came to pass when Moses uh, came down from the Mount Sinai that he with not that the skin of his faith shone while he talketh with them. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel, Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. And they were afraid to come nigh to him until Moses had done speaking with them. He put a veil over his face. Exodus 34, 29 and 30 through 33. While the translation from the fellowship with God into the morning hours to the incor. intercourse with our fellow man is often difficult. If we have met God, uh, we long, I'm sorry, when we have met God, we long to maintain the sense of his presence and our surrender to him. We go out to the breakfast table where perhaps in the, in the bosom of our own family, the atmosphere is all at once changed, and as the presence of men and the visible asserts itself, we begin to lose what we had found. Many of young Christians have been perplexed with the question how to keep his heart filled with that of which he does not feel at liberty or has not the opportunity to speak. Even in religious circles, it is not always easy to have free intercourse through lack of fervent and boldness on that which would give the greater profit and pleasure. Let us strive to learn how to uh, intercourse with men, um, maybe instead of hindrance, uh, help Uh, to maintain maintenance of the life of constant fellowship with God. Well, lessons which, the lessons which the story of Moses with the veil on his face teaches are very suggestive. Uh, Close and continuous fellowship with God will in due time leave its mark, (coughs) excuse me, leave its mark, and make itself manifest before men. Moses, with not that his face shone, the light of God shining from us will be unconscious. It will but deepen the sense of our being an earthly vessel. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 3 and 4, and 2 Corinthians 4. You know, the sense of God's presence in a man may often cause others to fear or at least to feel ill at ease in his company. When others observe what is to be seen in him, the true believer will know 
what it is to veil his face and provide provided by humility and love that he is indeed a man of like passion with those around us ah uh, and yet though all through all there will be a, a proof to that he is a man of god who lives in and has dealings with the unseen world. While the same lessons are taught by what our Lord said about fasting, uh, make no show of thy fasting so that thou appears not unto men to fast. Meet them in the joy and the kindness of God's uh, gentleness. As the Father be loved, his, ch his loving child counts upon God who has seen thee in secret to reward thee openly, to give thee grace in the intercourse with him, and to make them known that his grace and light are on thee. The story of Peter and John confirms the same truth. They had been with Jesus not only while he was on earth, but as he entered into the heavenlies and has received his spirit. They simply acted out what the spirit <coughs> of Christ taught them. Even enemies could see by their boldness that they had been with Jesus. Well, the blessings of intercourse with God may easily be lost by entering too deeply into intercourse with men. The spirit of the inner chamber must be carried out into the holy watchfulness throughout the day. We know not at what hour the enemy may come. This uh, continuance of the morning watch may be maintained by a quiet self resistance in not giving the reins to nature. It has, in a religious home circle, often sought help in each one's repeating a text at the breakfast table or some fixed subject, giving ease, easy occurrence to religious uh, con conversions. When one, excuse me, when one uh, wants the abiding sense of God's presence and the intercourse with them, be thou in the fear of God all the day long, has become an aim of the morning hour uh, with the deepest humility and the most loving intercourse with those around us. Grace will be sought and found to pass into the day's duties with a uh, continuance of fellowship kept, un kept unbroken. It is a great thing to enter the inner chamber and shut uh, to the door uh, and meet the Father in secret. It is a great thing to open the door again and go out into the enjoyment of that present with nothing which nothing can disturb. To some such life does not appear needful. The strain is too great. One can be a good Christian without it. To those who seek uh, to be men of one thing, who feel that if they are to be true and mighty and influence the church, and the world around them, they must be full of God and his presence. Everything will be uh, subordinate to the one question, how to bear in the earthen vessel the heavenly treasure, the power of Christ resting on us all the day. Well, that ends our reading for today. Until next time, uh, have a great day and Lord bless.